Hi, it's Nicole McQuirk for With With Joy, and today I have a tutorial showing how to use masking paper with 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 Joy stamped images. The first thing I've done is adhered my unmounted stamp to an acrylic block using the Sukuneko Tack and Peel. And it's just a reusable adhesive surface that you can use to um, temporarily mount your stamps for um, inking and stamping on your project. Then I stamped the image on the clear plastic sheet that go comes with the stamp -a -jig. Um, I wouldn't have to use that, especially for this uh, step, but I find that I get better placement that way. So I've stamped now the image on my paper that I'm using for my project and I've also already stamped the image on some stamping mask paper by Inka Dinka Doo and cut it out and layered it over the image. The next thing I'm going to do is adhere the fence image from Whip of Joy to my acrylic block with the tack and peel and then I stamped it on the stamp on the jig again and I'm just positioning it using that little T-square there to line it up where I want the image to be, then I've inked up my stamp and stamped it right over that first image. And with the mask that I've applied over that little boy stamp, none of the uh, image from the fence will stamp over that first stamped image. So now I have that all done. This is what the stamping mask paper looks like. And I'm going to need to stamp another mask, or create another mask, using the fence. So I'm going to stamp that on the stamp masking paper, and then I'm going to cut that out. And this is a pretty detailed image with all of that grass, so um, I won't share the whole thing. And I'm speeding through it a little bit here. But you want, when you're cutting out things like this, or really anything, you want to rotate your paper, not your scissors you'll get a much cleaner, nicer cut. And I try to stamp right on that black stamped line when I cut out my paper, or my mask, rather. That way, when you layer the mask over your uh, stamped image on your project, you get a nice clean line. So there it is, all cut out. And I'm going to peel that off of the backing paper, and then layer that over the stamped image on my project. Just going to smooth out all those little grass, pieces of grass there. Then I'm using a background stamp from Hero Arts. This is a friend definition and even though it says friend, I just use it as a text background. You can't really read it once you get it all inked up and stuff. It's just a really nice classic background. And then I like to lay my piece of paper over the cling stamp instead of how you would, might stamp where you would lay your project down and stamp, place the stamp over it, I do it that way. I get a nicer image, I find, when I do it that way. And I used some distressed, Distress Ink rather by Tim Holtz. This is the antique linen, and I used that to stamp the, the uh, background, and now I'm using it with the Ink Essentials blending tool from Ranger to add some ink all around the edges of my project. And you can see I've left those masks in place because I want to make sure that I don't get any of this ink on the stamped images. So I'm just going to keep working that in until I get a look that I like. Um, then I decided I wanted to distress the edges. So you can just take a distressing tool or even the edge of your scissors or your fingernail and distress them up if you like. Just adds a nice little bit of texture without bulk. And then I'm going to take some vintage photo distress ink and add that to that distressed edge. And anywhere that that edge is distressed, it will pick up even more of the ink, so it'll really make it darker. It gives a nice border to the, the stamped piece. And I have a glass countertop on my desk, so I'm just going to take a baby wipe and clean up all of that ink. Now it's time to peel off the masks to reveal the the stamped images underneath. And you can see there's a little bit of a white line there just because 
that the image doesn't really have an ending place at the bottom. So I'm just taking my antique linen and running it over there a little bit. Once I add the Copic marker coloring near the bottom on the grass, that will uh, cover all of that up. So I'm coloring the face and the hands with E000, E00, and E11, and then R20 for his cheeks. I used Y11 and Y28 for his hair. That gives a nice um, blonde look. I did go back in with a little bit darker color of brown too. I'll have that listed in the instructions. And you just want to go over it till you get the, the look that you're going for. So I just kind of go over mine, you know, until I feel like it looks like natural hair. And then I'm doing the jeans and a couple of shades of blue and I accidentally marked my paper so I took the color colorless blending tool to remove that and you just want to go over I only use two shades for the jeans so a lighter shade and then a darker shade for blending and the same for the green shirt I used the lighter shade well I used three shades the lightest shade for the like layer underneath the shorter sleeve shirt and then two shades for the shirt and two shades for the stripe on his shirt. For his shoes I'm just using some gray shades, the warm gray shades, just to make them look like natural white tennis shoes with a black sole. I used a couple of colors of orange for the flowers and then I'm using some yellows for the blades of grass. I'm just kind of quickly going in and using a feathering technique mostly to add some color. Added another darker yellow on top of that and then I'm going to color the fence. And I'm just, I also only use two colors for this. Going in there and getting all of those little spots colored. And then anywhere in the wood that I felt like might be a little darker, I added the, the darker shade of brown just kind of use some feathering there get down next to the the ground next to the grass and I used um, the yellows for the grass because I wanted this to be a more fall-ish looking scene on my card and next I went in with a green, the darkest green that I used on the shirt and I'm just feathering that into the grass it really gives that grass another layer of dimension and really helps make that come to life. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial brought to you by Whiff of Joy. Thanks for watching.